Hello, red kites and cranes. Hope you're all keeping well, staying stay safe and staying at home. And uh, I'd like to continue reading a short extract uh, that Miss McCoy started uh, uh, from the book Holes uh, by an author called Lewis Sacker. Uh, so I'm going to continue reading a little bit for you now. I hope you enjoy it. He didn't have any friends at home. He was overweight and the kids at his middle school often teased him about his size. Even his teachers sometimes made cruel comments without even realising it. On his last day of school, his math teacher, Mrs Bell, taught ratios. As an example, she chose the heaviest kid in the class and the lightest kid in the class and had them weigh themselves. Stanley weighed three times as much as the other boy. Mrs Bell wrote the ratio on the board three to one, unaware of how much embarrassment she had caused both boys. Stanley was arrested later that day. He looked at the guard who sat slumped in his seat and wondered if he had fallen asleep. The guard was wearing sunglasses so Stanley couldn't see his eyes. Stanley was not a bad kid. He was innocent of the crime for which he had been convicted. He'd had just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was all because of his no good, dirty, rotten, pig-stealing great-great-grandfather. He smiled and laughed. It was a family joke. Whenever anything went wrong, they always blamed Stanley's no good rotten pig stealing great great grandfather supposedly he had a great great grandfather who had stolen a pig from a one-legged gypsy and she put a curse on him and all of his descendants stanley and his parents didn't believe in curses of course but whenever anything went wrong it felt good to be able to blame someone things went wrong a lot they always seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He looked out the window at the vast emptiness and he watched the rise and fall of a telephone wire. In his mind, he could hear his father's gruff voice softly singing to him. If only, if only the woodpecker sighs, the bark on the trees was just a little bit softer. While the wolf waits below, hungry and lonely, he cries to the moon, if only, if only. It was a song his father used to sing to him. The melody was sweet and sad. But Stanley's father's favourite part, Stanley's favourite part was when his father would howl the word moon. The bus hit a small bump. And the guard sat up, instantly alert. Stanley's father was an inventor. To be a successful inventor, you need three things. Intelligence, patience and just a little bit of luck. Stanley's father was, a, was smart and had a lot of perseverance. Once he started a project, he would work on it for years, often going days without sleep. He just never had any luck. Every time an experiment failed, Stanley could hear him cursing his dirty, rotten, pig-stealing great-grandfather. Stanley's father was also named Stanley Yelnitz. Stanley's father's full name was Stanley Yelnitz III. Our Stanley is Stanley Yelnitz IV. Everyone in his family had always liked the fact that Stanley Yelnitz was spelt the same frontward and backward, so they kept naming their son Stanley. Stanley was an only child, as was every other Stanley Yelnitz before him. All of them had something else in common. Despite their awful look, they always remained hopeful. As Stanley's father liked to say, I learn from failure. But perhaps that was part of the curse as well. If Stanley and his father weren't always hopeful, then it wouldn't hurt so much every time their hopes were crushed. Not every Stanley Yelnitz had been a failure. 
Stanley's mother often pointed this out, whenever Stanley or his father became so discouraged that they actually started to believe in the curse. The first Stanley Yellens, Stanley's great-grandfather, had made a fortune in the stock market and he couldn't have been so unlucky if that happened. At such times she neglected, however, to mention the bad luck that befell the first Stanley Yellens. He lost his entire fortune when he was moving from New York to California. His stagecoach was robbed by the outlaw kissing Kate Barlow. If it weren't for that, Stanley's family would now be living in a mansion on a beach in California. Instead, they were crammed in a tiny apartment that smelled of burning rubber and foot odour. If only, if only. The apartment smelled the way it did because Stanley's father was trying to invent a way to recycle old sneakers. The first person who finds a curse for old sneakers, he said will be a very rich man indeed. It was the latest project that Stanley um, had started. The bus ride came increasingly bumpy because the road was no longer paved. I'm going to leave it there, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you get a chance to look at some more of our online reading from the other teachers. Uh, stay safe, stay at home and hope to see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.